This is an HR program on demand, a living seed capsule of work life and workplace coming live from a rooftop in Stockholm, Sweden. It's me, Anne Marie Andrich, and me, Katarina Berg. A vodcast, if you like, on HR straight across the counter. Sponsored by HR The Real Deal, HR by HR for HR. Hello, Gary. Hello, Emily. Welcome back. Thank you. Had to welcome you back because <laughs> it was such an inspirational session we had last time oh, we thank met. You. And you were walking us through your amazing work together with your team at mm -hmm. Spotify with, yes. you know, moving the business forward mm -hmm. with um, people analytics. Yes. Yeah. Um, in the last vod, you shared with us Disco. Mm. Now, for the ones who missed that, I would recommend mm -hmm. for everyone to watch it, of course. Yes. But if we were to do a short recap, where did we leave off the well, last time? Really. <laughs> so I think it was the journey of where we got to to Disco today. So how did we, uh, how was it created? How did we formed? Um, how are the business using it, what challenges, that kind of thing. So kind of, I guess, up to launch. Right. That's probably a good exactly. way up to describe to launch. it. Yeah. So, um, and then I remember I was asking you, um, have you seen any sort of movements in the maturity in the HR function mm. of how they now use mm. data and are they more comfortable with using mm. data on a, on a regular basis? What, what, what would you say? So I think yes is the short answer. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's definitely got better in terms of the... Um, Mature, but I think what we're starting to see now is the business are starting to become a bit more involved. You know, we've made tweaks and functionality so we can share it a bit better. Um, so I think you start to get that business demand HR curious. So it's kind of getting to that sort of form now. I think we're, again, we've sort of been more responsive of dialing into what the business wants to see here and now. So we, that's been on us as a team of just being a bit more reflective of uh, reflective of those things as well. So no, it's definitely, it's, it's matured, it's matured well. Um, and, but we've still got a way to go, I think. Um, but I think it comes into the broader thing of just where does data fit in an HR function right. and set the right expectations for that. And I think the bit I struggle, sometimes it can sound a bit too sort of evangelical, you know, data this and HR is going to be completely data led and data informed. And I've never really been a subscriber to that, to that view. So that's not sort of success for me with what people analytics sort of becomes. But no, definitely, definitely on that maturity curve. So further than where we were, uh, pre-disco. Um, and, I, and I find this very interesting. So so what would your philosophy be then for HR? Because you're saying it's, it's if I understand you correctly, mm. um, only being data-driven is not good. No. And that's interesting because you are a data person. Data yeah. person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Do myself so, job. <laughs> so, so, so share with us, what, what are your sort of philosophy there and your thinking? Well, I'd say it kind of comes like, if you look at it, we're talking about people. Yeah hugely complex yes and if there were ones and zeros then I'd probably have a different view um, but I think what we it's um, Katrina always talks about being data informed and she uses a bikini analogy yes she does uh, for uh, for that piece but it's the it's a balance of um, having data as part of the conversation and understanding an issue um, but then you're there's things which data will never be able to capture mm. you know uh, the circumstances the scenario the people the personalities um, strategically where you're going to be in five years you know you can't you can't see those things in in data so i think the the sort of comfort in being able to be really predictable and everything being in data which i think is why people would like to get to that stage but i just don't think you ever do um and to me it's something a bit sad if if we did get to that stage where everything was predictable and True. i think it takes some of this you know the art out of good managers and good people leaders and you know so it should always be part of the conversation i think that's probably where it's, it's been too much the other way you know, gut reactions, gut decisions, and how you're going to do things. But I don't think you go the other way as a result. Right. Um, that's kind of, so for me, it's success for people analytics is it's kind of so embedded in the function, you kind of almost don't know it's there. So people have the information they need when they want to see it. There's ideas you can do with analysis and otherwise, but decisions should be made right. by people, by business leaders, by HR people. And I think that's the that's sometimes where I feel we differ slightly in our, our kind of outlook of what we're trying to uh, of what we're trying to do because yeah like it becomes too much about ideals for me so mm -hmm. I sometimes struggle to um, see where it fits you know you kind of read things and watch things or listen to things I'm kind of I'm also a bit kind of I, I don't I'm not really quite undersure what all that means so right. as far as it's trying to be a bit more organic with it how do we fit in how do we part of what Spotify is trying to do in general um, so yeah yeah beautiful so we're using it as a compliment mm, exactly rather than the exactly. ultimate truth exactly yeah exactly we like that yeah <laughs> that was a much more succinct way of saying that <laughs> good so um 
what have been the learnings up until where you are now with setting disco up and mm. um and and obviously uh, you know my second question will be you know what's 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 next what's next learnings um i've been doing this a few years so some of the things i think um there's some real boring technical things which we learned um i think just sort of things which we thought were going to be easy which actually really quite time consuming and much more difficult than we thought were going to be um i think on the i think the learnings we found was there was things about the design and build we did at disco that we underestimate how important they were going to be to a user mm -hmm. um so we did do user research mm -hmm. and we found out a lot about that um, but i think we probably could have stress tested some of that more than we wanted to um but <sighs> I'm kind of always a bit more forward looking. It's right. I think you learn from those things and they're good things that you learn. So you, you come in town the next time. I think now we've gone out to the business and starting to see, I, I think the biggest learning is really dial into where the, it went, you know, we did a big launch and we had those things, but try and dial in as quickly as you can to what's topical in the business mm. in terms of just gaining traction, getting people into the system. We've done that more recently and we've seen the uptick in sort of usage as a result of that. Um, but yeah, so they, I think they've been the, I think they've been the big things. I don't think there's been too much in, I think the, the positive is some of the bets we made on what we thought was going to work, it, thankfully they turned out right and correct in terms of what we've been trying to do with things. Um, but um, yeah, so they've, they've been the biggest biggest learners we've had so far. Right. So what's next? What's next? Yeah. Um, I kind of pivoted on this quite a lot, actually. I, I thought it was going to be really down sort of one path. I think the, the sort of change we've made recently is... Um, rightly or wrongly, uh, we've sort of doubled down this idea of products. Mm -hmm. um, so we did a we did a sort of blog post as, um, and blogs are quite good, they're quite good at condensing your thoughts of where you're, where you're at. And there's a, there's a narrative right now in terms of the market that people analytics should be about the business mm -hmm. and solving business problems, which I get, um, but it, I, it kind of feels like you lose where you came from mm -hmm. in that argument. And for me, people analytics should still be about HR. Mm -hmm. um, Again, I might be wrong with it, um, but I can't think of any major people problem or people strategy decision that I've ever seen career-wise that's been made without HR heavily involved in it. So I think you can sometimes elevate a people analytics function to something it's not, which is its own standalone function in forming the business about things to do with their people. And I think it does a huge disservice to what your teams do in HR mm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. So that kind of just, that was a big point of reflection. Right? If, that's, if you hold that to be true, then what does a people analytics function need to be and how do we do it? And what our focus is now is how do you, if we've built a great capability in Disco, but how do you build products which complement what you're trying to do with a, a function? And then if you think about it as a product, it then has to scale. If you build a product, you're trying to solve a particular problem. Um, so it's kind of, you really have to refine and focus your thinking. So we're trying to solve this problem we think we can do it like this, but then you have to scale it, you have to sell it. Right. Um, so that's the sort of, so we're doing, we're doing quite a lot in the kind of talent space right now, which for Spotify is quite a unique sort of challenge. You know, we don't live in a world of sort of, you know, this sort of more traditional performance management type structures. So, you know, how do you identify talent? You know, how do you- understand? How do you identify talent? That's a very good question. Yes, it is. How do you do that? <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Um, but that's some of the challenges we're trying to take up. Now we have the data set, how, how can we look at things? You know, what, what do we notice? What is, um, what events do you see that indicate good performance? And we're doing a lot of work with, sort of with HR colleagues just to test some of our assumptions on these pieces. But if you could do that in a different way, how could you then start to impact, you know, people's careers? How do we manage talent? How do we progress things through? Um, you know, everything from succession, our future leaders, you know, there's, I think there's a, there's a world there we can start to untap. I think probably one of the biggest areas we're starting to look at now is, um, I think, as I said, in the sort of first world that we did, this idea of personalization. Right. Um, and I still, I think now we're moving into a work from anywhere. Your sort of digital presence, it's always been important, right? You know, and people talk about digitization of HR and where that sits. But I think when you move into a hybrid world of people in the office, people not, that presence has to be even stronger mm. and make sure people who aren't necessarily in the office feel just as connected as people do. And that's, there's gonna be lots of challenges within that anyway. Um, but I think the role for us is how, how can we inform that experience? So how do, you, how do you personalize a digital experience for your employees? So it's very much getting into this whole employee experience mm. time of things, which again, is not a traditional path you see people analytics in no. very often. Um, but that's one of our big, 
our big place for next year. Very, how, how very we fascinating. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, um, you were saying um, and, and uh, about, you know, uh, analytics not being in the HR function, but there is a notion that, you know, you should lift it out of the, mm. the HR function. How, where do you think that notion comes from and why? Um, I think a few, so, so my honest answer is that I think sometimes is um, people analytics teams, leaders can obviously see the value they can add. Mm. And sometimes it can be very frustrating to feel like you're not getting the chance to add that value. And sometimes that can come down as well. HR functions. Uh, Do you? Okay. Know. Someone is upset. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so sometimes that can be, well, HR doesn't get it. And if we spoke to the business directly, well, then they would get it and they'd start to action on it. And so then you start to look at, well, we're obviously just in the wrong function. So you need to lift us out. Right. And put us over here because we could add lots of value, but no one's sort of listening to us. Mm. Um, that's my honest. And that's maybe... Maybe being a bit too binary, I'm sure there's other factors too, but that's my sort of observation of those types of things. And um, back to a point first, why I don't subscribe to it is, um, you know, if you lift a people analytics function out and put it elsewhere, mm. it'll actually become an HR function. It will, right? Because it'll have a, it'll have a problem it identifies yeah. around people yeah. and it wants to implement it. True. And it's going to need capability beyond data and analytics. It's yeah. going to need HR business partners. You know, it's going to, it's, so that's my sort of view of where it becomes, it just becomes another. HR it's, function. Exactly. Yeah. So what's the point of lifting it out? Exactly. 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 Excellent. I am so happy to have had the opportunity to speak to you the My second pleasure. time. Well, thank you for having me And again. Uh, I'm sure that we will invite you um, a few more times to hear about, you know, the next steps because no, it's. Absolutely. I think you're doing some amazing work. Thank you. And again, being an HR professional, I so like to try the disco. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> so I'll ask you if I can, you know, tap in course, and, and course. play around. Of course. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Special permission. Lovely. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to the next steps. Pleasure. You know how we end I do. the session. I do. Yeah. You were so good at the, the I do. last I've, time. I've practiced it, I'll be yeah, honest. Yeah, you did. <laughs> okay. okay, Gary, the three things. So stay safe, yes. stay strong, stay active. Ida Modalia. Ida Modalia. Perfect. He did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try disco. Can I play around with it? Are you sure? I'm not sure. You have nothing in your glass. Nothing. 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 So, shall I go for a cup as a prop? Honestly, I'm good. Honestly, I'm good. Are you sure? I'm positive, yeah. I'm good. It's warm. Mm -hmm. Is there Scottish tea? Yeah, it's a whiskey. Where did we leave off? <laughs> we're, we're running the show now. Okay. Hello, Gary. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>